Hello IPXers, Electronica 2024. This is our first video with William from Nanopower. We constantly are looking for disruptive technology. Things that you don't know about, things that you haven't seen. We've walked onto their booth, this is disruptive. So William, if Nanopower didn't exist, what would design engineers at OEM be, OEMs be doing today? Yeah, if we, if we didn't exist, they were still using standard technology, which uh, doesn't allow a system to avoid power consumption when doing nothing. So right. no normally battery operated long-term monitoring systems, they don't measure, they don't do all the time something. They are doing nothing most of the time. But they're still burning power. They are still burning power. So with our technology, we are able to reduce this power to a few nanowatts, which is nothing. Right. compared to what they are they have now. Right, so just describe what would be a typical system where you're describing that they're still drawing power, although they're doing nothing. Where would be a typical application that where you would see that today? Yeah, I can show you uh, this one. We have we yep. are demonstrating this. We, we have a demo, which is basically more or less a home automation monitoring system. Right. Where if you want to control your, your, your home in uh, ambient, so yep. we have a temperature, uh, uh, lum luminosity, pressure, and uh, relative humidity. Uh, we are measuring this. So a typical industrial yes, type industrial sensor. Yes, industrial or home. Or home uh, sensor. If you want to control your home yep, yep. Uh, with HVAC, so uh, we are able to monitor uh, such uh, parameters uh, once a second, and we uh, are able to turn off the power of all the sensors when you don't need them in between the seconds. Right, so, we so we're talking about very, very small amounts of time, Yes. but then added up over, over a period of time, that's drawing power down yes. all the time. Yes, so right. uh, we are able to monitor the sensors and um, only uh, send data out if a threshold is above or below something right. that was set. So we don't need to send information which it's not important which is the same as it was on the past. So yep. we, we only trigger information out when it's needed to the system. Right, so in other words, for, for, for our community, it's at the point that where you've said this data is critical, as in not critical about dangerous, but it's at yes. the point that you, you, you set the threshold yes. and it's at that point that it will then kick in, take the data yes. and then send the data. Not only because I know that system designers, they want to have keep alive information and we also have the, the possibility to send keep alive messages from in five to five minutes or 10 to 10 or whatever, they, right. they feel safe that they know the system is operating. Because if you yep. only send data when something changes, and if it never changes, it might never work in the next year, but people want to know it's working. So in this example here that we are talking now, we, ju we just sent a, a, a five minute uh, keep alive session. So we know that in our home, in this case, we are measuring all the variables we need. Right, so, right. And is this is this at the point that the data needs to be sent? Yes, or is that one of those presets? This is a preset. That's the preset yeah, one. Yeah, the preset right. one. So okay. good, good. So we've talked about so, so, so just explain a little bit more about uh you've explained the environment where if you didn't exist. Yes. So how do they integrate that? What would they have now that would be doing that 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 job? And then what's the difference between what they've got? now to what you would deliver to them? Yeah, so now the, the uh, system designer, they normally have a host in the system which sends data BLE, Wi-Fi, LTE, whatever, yeah, yeah. and they control the sensors directly. So yeah. the host is in direct contact with all the sensors. Right. We act in between. So our device will be a, a, a kind of a sensor to the host and will be a master to all the sensors. So we shut down the host we receive um, a kind of a recipe on how to operate all the sensors. We shut down the host and we, we, we take control of all the peripherals. Right. Okay. Right. We yep. have industry standard communication protocols like I2C and SPY, which are standard in such sensors. And we take care of all the system with much lower power. When something happens, as I said before, we wake up the host, we send all the information already clean to the yep. host and he picks up the information, sends out via right. Wi-Fi, BLE, whatever. Okay, one last quick question then. Yep. If you're, I mean, what, what what you're describing is something that's probably been there for quite a while. Um, so so, so from a time-wise, in terms, terms of manufacturing time, that's quite a in-place, ready legacy system. What's, what's the integration issues that they have to take into account when they go, we're gonna go with a nanopower solution 
because we like this idea of saving power. We like this idea of, I can't remember the phrase you used, but it described at a, at a, you know, a certain point that you send the, I can't remember what the phrase was that you used, but anyway, whatever that phrase was. Formation out. Yeah, every 10 minutes, every 15 yes, minutes. Yes, keep alive. Or, or yeah, the keep, is, it, yeah. is that a phrase, the keep alive? Yeah. Yeah, or at the point that something comes in and says, I need to send that data. Yes. Because you're, you're putting something into the system. So what is the integration issues? What, what, what do yeah. they have to think about yeah. when they do that? So um, we thought on that because by core, I'm an engineer also and a, a integration and embedded engineer. And I don't like uh, when I was uh, doing integration, I didn't like to have different SDKs to do something. Yeah. If you use a wireless chip, you have a, a SDK. If you have something else nowadays, you need another SDK. You, you have a, a, a bunch of SDKs to operate. We yeah. thought on this. We made our system to, to behave as a normal slave. Okay. Yeah. We provide an API, a C, and a, 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 a right. header file, and they just send so the system will just recognize yes, you straight away. Yes, straight right. away. So it's we have we provide the API and the driver, so they immediately understand how to operate with this. Yeah. Even more, we if you go to that screen, we have here a, a, an app where people can configure. This is an evaluation board that we we provide to customers, where uh, the customer without doing any code. He doesn't need to use his system yep. to operate. We have an app where he can configure all the registers and all the operation mode without even knowing how to code. Yeah. This is all graphical. Yeah. So we So that's so it's already embedded. It's yes. agnostic already. Yes. And it's already embedded into yes. the system and the Yes. Chip. So you just need to tick boxes, understand more or less what you want to do. You just plug in the sensors and it automatically burns the, the code. The, the, the behavior of our ship set and it will automatically manage all the sensors and they can measure the current in real time immediately. Yeah. They don't need to right. lose time. So right. the idea is someone unboxes this, he plugs the USB to the laptop, installs the app, and in five minutes he is testing the truth we are telling him yeah. How, yeah. how low he can go down in power. Yeah. Immediately, yeah. okay? So this won't be it's a, it's a disruptive technology, yes. but, but this won't disrupt an already legacy design. It will automatically integrate yes. in and just understand. Yes. And what is already there, you just called it a slave. It will already know and it will already start doing its job the yes. moment you plug Immediately, it in. Immediately, yes. Excellent. So just tell us quickly about evaluation. So you've listened to the video. You've gone, I've got an industrial system, home automation system. Mm -hmm. I like the idea of less power. I like the idea of it being off and not burning, even though it's tiny amounts of power but over a 24 hour period, over a seven day period, over yes. a 12 month period, that's actually a lot of power. So just tell us about how they can come to you. Obviously the answer to that is ipexchange.tech, ipexchange.tech, but just tell us quickly about what evaluation systems you've got so that they can come and play with it. Okay, so this is an evaluation kit. Yep. Basically what we have here is a, a carrier board which is already populated with our sensor and compatible with the app. We have a, a, a Arduino Uno pinout, which right. is compatible with everything. 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 Yeah, yeah. We also have two types of PMOD connections, yeah. a, a half and a full PMOD, which you yeah. can, we can connect the host, several hosts, I2C and SPY. So it's plug and play immediately with off the shelf sensors you can yeah. buy anywhere. Yeah. This is well thought through. This is well thought through. We also provide in the same kit some sensors if people want to try out immediately without buying or whatever they already have some sensors to test temperature and pressure and so on we also have a, a, a cortex m3 to test without radio but it's easy to put, put here any type of arduino to type compatible shield and it you are ready to go william thank you for our first interview at electronica 2024 thank you brilliant nice talking to you bye bye